Hey Kingdom Hearts fans, I have a new challenge video for everyone today. For today's challenge, I'm going to answer the question, can we beat Kingdom Hearts 2 without using the attack command? This attack command, I cannot use it. Okay, from the start, this is a mission failed. The entire Roxas prologue cannot be done without hitting the attack command. This is a challenge for post Roxas. Also, this is more of a proof of concept than a challenge video, so don't go too hard on me for not playing on Critical. I suck at games. Just as an FYI, I found out about this like halfway through my challenge playthrough of the game, that ZXC, I know I'm saying this incorrectly, has sort of already done something exactly like this for Kingdom Hearts 2 and Kingdom Hearts 3, and he has full gameplay clips for all of the bosses. Give his video a look as it's better than mine and shows the complete struggle through boss fights. For my playthrough, I spend a lot more time using the peekaboo strategy, which is using all my magic and ending with a limit and then waiting for MP to recharge to do it all over again. Anyways, watch his video after mine's. So, can we beat Kingdom Hearts 2 without using the attack command? So the rules for not using the attack command are pretty simple. I obviously cannot use the attack command ever in this run, with the exclusion of when I play as Roxas. What I can do is use magic. Actually, because of that, I chose to use the magic build for this playthrough, so I use a staff to boost magic before we fight Cypher. And most importantly, when we have to choose a weapon and dive to the heart, I chose a staff. As a quick side note, did you know that if you choose the magic staff with Cypher, Roxas will actually use the magic staff throughout his misadventures in Twilight Town. I thought this was cool, so I just wanted to bring it up. So when you and the investigation team are going to Sunset Hill, when you have to fight the Shadow Roxas, he doesn't fight with a staff. He uses that baton. Pretty weird that the mirror image shadow perfectly mimics everything about Roxas except the weapon. Just saying. Reaction commands are allowed. As long as I don't use the attack command, I'm good. Drive forms are allowed. I cannot use the attack command in drive forms. And I know that the wisdom form says shoot instead of attack, but I'll elect not to use that command either. What I do use is magic and drive forms, so I can keep spamming magic commands since using magic is allowed. Also, I'm going to try to level up wisdom form and limit form throughout the game, since wisdom form gives us MP abilities and Limit Form will be the drive form of last resort for Sora to give us that extra bit of health. Spamming Sonic Blade and other limits in Limit Form is allowed, since it's sort of like a magic for Limit Form. Also, does anyone else just use Valor Form to run around or is it just me? Limits are allowed, so this BS that I do to Scar is allowed, since I never actually use the attack command. Do you guys think I'm making it too easy on myself with these rules? At the time of making this, my playthrough was more of a proof of concept rather than a challenge run. Summons are allowed. I say summons are allowed, but really all I use is Stitch. I'll say this now, Stitch is not needed in the run, but he helps a ton. The peekaboo strategy really uses Stitch to his fullest capacity. Since we can attack, we would just be waiting for magic to regenerate, so Stitch just saves us from hours of waiting. I'm sure it's literal hours. And with all that out of the way, we can start the video. So we've already failed a run with Roxas, since we must fight, but I won't count that part. When you take control of Sora, you can't do anything since you have no magic limits or drives. So literally just stand and let Donald and Goofy do all the work in front of the clock tower. Pretty much the same story as you make your way all the way to Yen Sid. There are some opportunities that you can help them out with Cyclone, Seriously though, just stand there or walk around. Donald and Goofy are actually good teammates, and this is a strategy that we will be using during the entire run of the game, so there is a lot of waiting. Nothing really to report in Hollow Bastion either. Defending the gates is not too bad, and I'm sure that I'll be singing a different tune if I was on critical, since I took a lot of damage here. But the strategy is to wait for the enemies to line up in front of the gate, and then use one blizzard command to get them all. Leon is the meat shield for us. So for Mulan's world, did I mention there's gonna be a lot of waiting we'll have to do? Besides using Valor form to run fast, we can also use it to refill MP. Honestly not sure we should have used it here. This is legitimately hard to do and I failed it several times as the morale gods deplete so quickly. 
I have no words of advice, other than just to run around and hope that the Shadow Heartless decide to show up sooner rather than later. But this mission is more of a test of your patience and luck. Donald's magic is so good guys. He can damage enemies using the same magic that Sora cannot use to damage enemies. So much waiting, but fire is useful to us when we get to use it. If only the Heartless could just chill and wait for it to recharge. That's better. Burn, baby. Speaking of fire, Shan Yu takes magic damage, so beating him is just waiting. And finally, we will learn the third thing that we use Valor form for this run, and it's to do some damage to enemies. Not that it's a lot, I really don't have much to say for this boss or most of the bosses since it's just me running around waiting for the MP to recharge. Then using all the MP and ending it with a limit. I know, the peekaboo strategy. Okay, so we now have the hidden dragon keyblade, which will be invaluable to us for about half the game since it has a 2 magic stat, which will be the highest for the next few worlds, and the MP rage ability so we can actually recover MP from getting damaged, which we will do voluntary, but mostly involuntary. So our first real roadblock is in Beast Castle, and that's the Dwar boss. You will have some difficulty for this boss. What I would recommend is to have most of his health down, and then use one magic command to get the reaction command for him to be released. Then you can attack him with magic. The Bat Cry reaction command is also useful here to get some extra damage in. But as far as I know, this will be a boss that we wait for. As for the boxes in the dungeon, you can use magic to destroy them. Just use Cogsword and spam Blizzard for beasts. He's a pussycat. For the Dark Ball, you can release him from the chandelier and do chip magic damage to harm him, so he can be beaten with patience. When he grows arms and legs, he's actually easier since Fire and Blizzard commands actually hit him. And of course, I ended with beasts by using a limit. So the running away from Hades part mostly consists of me waiting by running away, using Bat Cry, and for a few seconds spamming magic and then ending it with Orin's limit and repeating a hundred times. Cerberus isn't that hard either. Orin takes the lead while Sora watches and then I decided to attack. Phil's training is actually hard. This is the most difficult thing you'll have to do in the level. The first round is easy and we also learn that on the third magic command the pot will break. For the Maniac mode though, try to line up some of the pots, so you get more orbs like me. And just know that you'll have to use at least two ethers to beat this training. This is honestly the hardest thing I had to do. Demix actually isn't that bad. You can keep spamming fire, but just use the reaction command whenever you can and you'll be good. As for the Hydra, he takes magic damage, so yet again another long wait. When he has three heads in the ground, you're going to have to do some pre-planning, meaning you whittle down each head's HP so you can kill them all in one go. Then you just get on the Hydra's back so the heads can rest so Sora can do one blizzard command and then vanquish all of them at the same time. The last part is just waiting and using Pegasus Run to do damage. Honestly not as bad as it should be. Mini section in Disney Castle is easy. Just use Fate, walk up a meter, call her and then use Fate again. Okay guys, so Timeless River. We may have failed to run right here. We can't damage the crate that Pete is lying down on, so we must jump on the hook and attack. However, the command menu switches to hit. It does not say attack. I don't like these technicalities, but I'll say that I didn't use the attack command. You guys can say if I failed or not. The actual Pete boss wasn't that bad either. The construction area in the last part of the fight is the easiest spot to beat him since you can just use reaction commands to kill him. Port Royale isn't too bad since the pirates actually take more magic damage than physical damage and it's just a ton of running around. Like Beast Castle, you can get rid of these boxes by using magic three times. Really that's it. We have wisdom form now so we can abuse magic when we have mandatory fights with pirates. For Barbosa, Jack and Donald can harm the chameleon so Sora will have to finish it. Barbosa is also weak to magic so abuse it like I did so much damage with Wisdom Form without attacking him. For Agrabah, here's a Charlie pro tip. Go into Wisdom Form here to level it up since these enemies are plentiful and easy to defeat. This part is different from normal, but entirely doable. Just spam lightning and do every reaction command that the bosses want you to do. Then you're just playing the waiting game again. For Halloween Town, this fight Lock, Shock and Barrel is a prime example of the peekaboo strategy. 
As for the Oogie Boogie boss fight, you can only do a set amount of damage when he falls down, so just make sure that you have enough MP to attack him with. This part right here sucks. I ended up getting Oogie down to 1 HP and ran out of ethers, so I was just waiting for magic to regenerate and right when it came back he ran away. It sucks because the spikes hit him, Donald hits him and even Jack hits him, but he doesn't die. I even went into first person and was going to end it super cool like, but then Oogie decided to leave and make me throw up presents a fifth time. I should say that I mainly had potions in my inventory for this boss fight. If I had equipped some ethers, this would not have happened. I don't know why, but in all these games I end up saving items for an event that will never come, so I'll end up beating the game with all the best items. Prylands is the fastest level for the entire game. Just run. There is only one mandatory non-boss fight for the level. You can sort of juggle the hyenas though, so that's cool. For Scar, spamming Blizzard seems to do the trick. I did die to him a few times though. However, spamming magic and ending it with a limit is all Scar really needs. So once again, the peekaboo strategy. In Space Paranoids, you can unfreeze the door by using fire. Go figure. I didn't know that. Same thing for this box. I was legitimately happy for this box minigame, as I had no idea if it would work. Quick question for you guys. How is this notes about the human heart? There is no heart on the picture. No, I will not use the attack command either. Just use the bike to attack. Beating the C3PO boss is business as usual. Just spam magic and then end it with a limit. Eventually you'll get to freeze him. And also guys, just listen to poor Donald here. I feel like this is sort of animal abuse. Before fighting Demix, I return to Timeless River to level up Wisdom form so we can get MP abilities. Quick Run is good too. Now we'll be using our secret weapon for the run, Stitch. This will make a lot of the game more tolerable. With Stitch regenerating our MP, the Circle of Life Keyblade from Pride Lands and the Wisdom MP abilities, we are definitely ready to fight Demix. So no lie, I actually got a good amount of Demix done using Stitch. Spoiler alert for my other videos. He's easier to beat without attacking than not using a reaction command. The 1000 Heartless fight is doable without attacking. Obviously you're just spamming Sparkle Ray and Rising Sun. For Land of Dragons Part 2, use the cheap technique of using magic and then when it's about to finish, the Trinity Limit on Riku. You can even throw in an RC if you're quick enough. I actually forgot to put fire back on the shortcuts, so I had to use the menu. It's actually pretty strong and I ended it with Mulan's Limit. I was actually very surprised that it put Sora right back on top of the dragon. For Beast Castle, there is nothing too interesting here. What I can say is this is how we will be doing a lot of damage now to enemies, just spamming Reflect. So for Zaldan, guard his attacks so you get the reaction command, learn. Seriously that's the secret. I ended up doing Olympus 2. There is no reason to do this to beat the game. As you would expect, the fight with Hades is actually pretty much the same as usual. You just hit the light orbs and then use Blizzard on him and then wait for MP to recharge. Now we're in Port Royal. Beating the Grim Reaper for the first time is easy. Spam magic and then go into drive and repeat. I did find this though. What are Donald and Goofy talking about here? I never knew they had secrets. Getting the rest of the medallions is also pretty simple. Even beating the Grim Reaper this time is easy. Spam magic can do all the reaction commands. When Jack and Donald hit the boss with attacks, he drops MP orbs. Which Sora needs so this boss was easy. Not even long like some of the other bosses. I will warn you that if you attempt to do this run, you'll just start standing waiting for bosses to go back into their vulnerable states before you do anything, just like me. My thinking here was that in a few hits, of Donald's attacks, he'll go and steal some of the medallions, so I did nothing whilst I had the opportunity to attack, even though he was vulnerable. For Agrabah too, I didn't know this, but when you have to stop Jafar, you can use Lightning as Sora and he'll stop. Anyways, you can just use magic on him to continue the chase. That's really it for the level. Just don't attack these guys. When you have to fight Jafar, make sure you have magic when you attack his head, otherwise you'll just end up standing there like a dum-dum like me. Similar strategy like when we fought the door boss in Beast Castle. 
I definitely recommend the Circle of Life Keyblade since we spent a lot of time waiting. Seriously guys, the peekaboo strategy works, it's just a lot of waiting. The best part about Jafar is that when he summons a storm, you can just fly around in a circle and this even helps with the peekaboo strategy. Another easy boss, just long. Jack's Dance Trinity is super effective with Lock, Shock, and Barrel. I had no idea it was this effective. It's also effective against the Experiment boss. It's weak to Thunder and you can beat it without a ton of issues. Before I face Roxas, I leveled up Limit Form a bit. Honestly, just spamming Reflect is a good enough strategy to beat him. I did die a few times to him, but this is probably the most challenging fight you'll have to do. So if you can beat him, then you can beat the game without using the attack command. Zigbar will go down with time. He is easy. He just takes what feels like forever. We tackle Luxor the same way we do every other boss. Use magic and end it with a limit. Peekaboo strategy all the way. Sax is actually pretty easy. Same strategy as usual of spamming magic and ending with a limit. Except this time we have to hit him with his weapon first. If you're having trouble with him, summon Stitch and he'll make the bad man go away. Time for Xemnas. Honestly, there's not much to tell here. Just spam reflect. There is no secret. After that, use Stitch for the left and right cylinder pieces while spamming magic. You can use Stitch for the door boss while spamming magic. I can also verify that beating Armored Xemnas on Stitch is 100% possible. Stitch is the MVP. Unfortunately, for Armored Xemnas 2, you can't use Stitch, so we'll have to try. But magic and limits are available, so this shouldn't prove too difficult. Okay, so time for the big one. Xemnas can take elemental damage. And when he does the move where he smacks Sora around in the air, just use Reflect for extra damage. It should be a crime with how well this works. Riku is the MVP here, honestly, as I thought I was dead. I was ready to go into limit form, and I was sure I would die in Xemnas' light show. As you can see though, I didn't have any time to go into limit form to heal, use an item or anything, but Riku pulled through. So that's it guys, I'm happy to say that it is 100% possible to complete this game without ever having to use the attack command. Well only if we don't count the time we play as Roxas and the Pete boss fight in Timeless River. Though I'm going to say the hit command doesn't count as an attack. Stitch is the MVP of the run though. We can actually beat the game without ever having to use him but he speeds up so much time of waiting that he'll have to do. Also the Circle of Life Keyblade helps with waiting that he'll have to do. I said this at the start, but this was more of a proof of concept than a challenge run. And I know I'm saying this wrong, but ZXC already did this on Critical, so you can see the pain he goes through if you want the full gameplay. If you guys have any ideas for challenge runs or just want me to do a run through the game in first person, leave a comment down below, and thank you for watching.